Okay. All right, so today we're going to learn solving equations by graphing, finding solutions by graphing. And I'm just going to tell you up front that it's a lot easier to solve equations um, algebraically, the way we've learned to do it in Chapter 3 right now, than it is to solve by graphing. But it's a principle that as you advance in math, it will become easier to solve by graphing than it is by doing algebra. So when we learn this process right now, it's going to seem like, why in the world would we do this? Um, but it's a process we need to get familiar with so that when you get to more complex algebra, um, it's something you go, oh yeah, no problem. Here's the principle. The principle is, is, is that wherever a line crosses the x-axis, whatever the x-intercept is, is the solution of the equation. So wherever it crosses the x-axis is what your solution is. So let's look at an example here. Um, on example, example one, it says, um, solve 2x minus 5 equals 1. And again, this is really easy to solve, right? If we were just going to solve for x, we would add 5 to both sides, divide by 2. And we can see that the answer would be 3, three right? Because we would add 5 to get 6, divide by 2 to get 3. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do it the graphing way. And again, this is going to take 10 times longer than what it just took us to find the answers 3. But it's just something we're getting familiar with for later on. Um, so look at the instructions here in this chart on page 250. It says, write the equation in the form ax plus b equals 0 ax plus b equals 0. So what that means is get everything over to the left side. So whatever's on the right side, it basically means get everything on the same side. But most of the time, just move to the left side. So what would I do to get everything on the left side? What would I do to move this 1? I would subtract 1. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get 2x minus 6 equals 0. And then it says on step two, write the related function y equals ax plus b. So what we're going to do is we're going to take whatever this is, and we're going to write another equation, a related equation, replacing 0 with y. So it says y equals 2x minus 6. And what form does this look like? This is slope-intercept form. This is y equals mx plus b. So at this point, it says step three, graph this equation. So if we were to graph this equation, what would I do? The y-intercept is negative. Okay, so my y-intercept is negative 6, so I'll go down 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 goes on the y-axis. My slope is what? 2. 2. 2, I need to make it a fraction. Over, so, so 2 over 1. This is rise over run. So I, from here, I rise 2. I rise 2 and I run 1. Okay, now I need my straight edge again, but I don't have one, so for now I'm just going to go ahead and draw a couple more points over. I'm going to rise 2, run 1, rise 2, run 1, again, and this is not a straight line, but it's supposed to be like so. And where does the line cross the x-axis? Um, three. 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 So the solution to this is three. x equals 3. Now, again, how long did it take us to figure out by solving algebra that x was 3? Very fast. How long did this take us? Very long. Quite a while. So why in the world are we doing this? We're doing this because well, when we get into uh, quadratics, which is x squared, we have more complicated things, and especially when you get to algebra 2, when you start adding third and fourth powers of x, it becomes a lot easier to solve by graphing. Yes? Can you use 2 over 1? 